I'm glad I live in America because here I'm pretty free to make my own choices in most of my life. Still, I do have to obey all those rules. They add another pile every year. If that's what we get in America, imagine what it would be like to live under communism. The Soviet empire fell 10 years after Free to Choose was published. What then? What would the people in those former communist countries do? What kind of system might they create? A follow-up documentary to Free to Choose explained that in some countries, like Estonia, the leaders were smart enough to turn to Milton Friedman. When the Soviet Union dissolved in the early 1990s, Estonia reclaimed its independence. Desperate for a new direction, Estonians elected the youngest prime minister in Europe's history. Mark Lahr was 32 years old. Many in his cabinet were in their 20s. We started from 1992 with inflation 1,000%. We had top in economy 30%. We had prognosis for unemployment on 35%. We had the shortage of everything. And of course, I didn't know very much about the economy. The only book about the economy, what I have read, was Milton Friedman, the freedom of choice, and that was the only one. So. And he modeled Estonia's economy on Friedman's suggestions, and Estonia prospered. The man who made that film and all the Friedman films is Bob Chittister. And I also thank you. You helped me start the charity that put some of my videos in high school. So you approached Friedman, and he was reluctant at first. No, he was reluctant, but with the help of Rose, his wife, I persuaded her, and she helped me persuade him. And it changed their lives a bit. Oh, my changed his life profoundly. He had always answered every letter he'd received personally. He couldn't do that anymore. And he had to change to an unlisted phone number. He was getting so many requests. And after that, and since then, thousands of people, you say, have come up to you and to Friedman saying, Free to Choose changed my life? Yes, it's very humbling to have people say, what you did changed your li their lives, changed their careers, changed the way they looked at the world. Let's now go to Germany and bring in Tom Palmer. Uh, he's with the Atlas Economic Research Foundation, which helps spread Friedman's ideas all over the world. And years ago, Tom, you used to smuggle free to choose into communist countries? We took them into Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland, and the Soviet Union. And people were thirsty for ideas. They knew communism didn't work, but they didn't know enough about how free societies do work. I can't imagine it was welcome when you tried to cross the border. No, not at all. In fact, you know, the Cato Institute produced a very small edition of Friedman's writings and Hayek's writings in Russian for the purpose of smuggling them in your luggage. And so I brought lots of those books also and uh, distributed them discreetly. Uh, into the hands of the right people who, as I said, were just thirsty for these kinds of ideas. And you're still spreading these ideas. I have this movie poster that you, you sent us here. You were recently in Tajikistan. How do you say it? Tajikistan. Tajikistan. Is one of the this is a real Soviet country. Republics in Central Asia. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and I, I see it's you have. Just north of Afghanistan. You have a bigger picture of Arnold, I'm afraid to say. I guess that's what gets people into the theater. It was the eye catcher, and uh, they put those posters up around college campuses, and uh, Arnold is the one that people recognize, but Milton Friedman is the one with the ideas that they come to hear. And so in Tajikistan, these ideas live on. And they're going to see that instead Absolutely. of Shrek? Absolutely. In fact, it was a wonderful... <laughs> I guess so. It's, uh, some people are more interested in ideas, but in fact, these are very popular. We have been promoting a Russian edition of Free to Choose all over the former Soviet Union. We're coming out with a Chinese edition, entirely dubbed in Chinese. And there is a market for this. These ideas do live on. The reason you're in Germany now is to compile a new freedom list, a ranking of what countries mm -hmm. are most free. What we're trying to do now is to come up with a metric of freedom overall. So incorporating also not just economic freedom, but things like military conscription, which is an issue about 
which Friedman was very passionate. Equal rights of women. Are women free from violent assault? The right to freedom of worship, the right to freedom of speech, the right to move freely. People forget in many countries of the world your movement is very severely restricted. You require a residency permit to be able to live in this town or that. So we're trying to come up with a metric of freedom in general. It's a, it's a very difficult project and a lot of really smart people are here in Berlin to discuss this and try to create a system of measuring freedom. This is part of Milton Friedman's legacy as a social scientist and as a passionate defender of individual freedom. Well, thank you, Tom Palmer, and I'm aware that you have risked your life to spread these ideas, especially before the fall of communism.